Folks, the church of the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, King Eternal. We're sending out a message to the Christian world today. Uh, the forces of evil that are at work in our world are unprecedented uh, in biblical prophecy. Uh, for our times, we are at a very specific place in the end time prophecies. Um, before, we have seen tribulations uh, from the very t earliest beginnings of the church uh, in, in the time of the life of the apostles. We saw where uh, the apostles were put through tribulations because of the uh, Roman Empire and other things, the established religion of the world fought against them at, at every turn they made. But today, it... What, what is different is we're beginning now in, it's already begun. The, the final, uh, stages are being set for what will, will come, which is going to be the end of all things as we know them. Um, now without getting into a lot of that, that's what the video presentation is going to be. The following videos, I'm introducing that to give you some information that the videos themselves do not give that I feel is of the utmost importance, so I'm starting with that. Uh, and that's about your personal salvation and about reaching this lost world for the cause of Christ because the opportunity, the curtain is closing on this present world in which we live in. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If we're a part of his kingdom, and that's what I'm going to tell you you must do to, uh, I'm going to give you the, what, what the Bible says is required for you to be a part of that kingdom. And if you want to be a part of that kingdom, which is for the eternal world, for that great city that is built without hands, the New Jerusalem, which is an extra dimensional city from this world. If you want to enter in and become a part of that, you're going to have to do it the way Jesus and the apostles said. So following uh, this short little word that I'm going to be giving you this morning, uh, there will be some videos that bring you up to speed on what is the present condition of the world as far as the biblical prophecies go. And uh, you're going to be very shocked by some of the things that unfold in those videos that that's going to show you that, that most of us, most folks have been taught wrong about a lot of things concerning what the Bible actually teaches. So uh, it, without further ado, let's talk about what I want to focus on for just a few minutes here. And that is what's required for you to become a born again child of God in the kingdom of God. Uh, Jesus, uh, a man came to him named Nicodemus in St. John chapter 3. And when, Saint, when, when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, uh, he probably had several questions. He was curious, wanted to talk to the Lord. But the Lord went ahead and got right down to what Nicodemus really needed to know. And this is what Jesus told Nicodemus. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, in other words, he wouldn't be able to even comprehend it. He wouldn't be aware. If you can't see something, you don't know it's there. So that's basically what Jesus is telling you there. And then he went on, and Nicodemus questioned him concerning this. And in verse 5 of chapter 3, St. John, Jesus tells him, uh, he reiterates and changes and advances what he told him. Although it says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, both, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now you see, in, in verse 3, he told him he couldn't see the kingdom of God. In other words, comprehend it. If you can't comprehend or see something, you cannot participate. Over in verse 5, he tells him, you cannot enter in. Now, entering into the kingdom of God is more than just seeing it, more than just comprehending 
It begins with being able to see it and comprehend it. But here it says you cannot enter into it. Now, what that's simply saying is you cannot function as a child of God, a citizen of another country, a citizen of another world, unless you are born again of the spirit and the water. Now, before I take you to the next verse, let me explain to you. Jesus was still walking around in the human flesh form, the, uh, as we're told in Colossians, the image of the invisible God. In other words, walking around is the image that can be seen, can be, t can be touched. That's Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 15, if you will look that up. Now, while Jesus was here, they didn't have a clue, really, the totality of what his mission was. He had to reveal this over a period of about three years with the disciples that he had chosen to become his apostles. Now understand that. So understand that there is a process of seeing, understanding, comprehending. Jesus was teaching his apostles this. But then on entering into it, where you become an active faith child of God, participating and working in the kingdom of God, we have to be grown into that. As we are born again, we are nurtured, grown, and matured. Folks, we don't have a lot of time. Understand there's going to be a lot of babes. There's not going to be a lot of maturity in these times. Because false religion, false prophets are everywhere. Men who are not in the gospel work for the cause of the gospel understand. They're in it for the things they see for themselves, many of them. Money grubbers, greedy men, uh, lustful men, people who are in this for reasons of personal gain. Um, you have to understand that we're dealing with that today. That's not what the true church is about. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take you over into the book of Acts. And I'm going to tell you what the spiritual rebirth is so that you can understand what Jesus was telling Nicodemus he must do that he had to do that he, he, he couldn't comprehend the kingdom of God he couldn't enter into the kingdom of God without this when the day of Pentecost come and you'll need to read that you need to study your Bible in these days folks at the book of Acts, we are told about the birth of the New Testament church. This is after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, where he took all the sins of the world and hung them there on the cross and represented all of our offense before the Lord, all of our disobedience, all of our sin, and took it upon his own flesh. And his blood covered and purchased back that which was lost. And when the day of Pentecost come and the Lord <clears throat> showed forth these miracles where the 120 had gathered together in the upper room, miracles, signs, and wonders appeared. They heard a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. They appeared unto them cloven tongues, visions of cloven tongues of fire, which sat upon each one of them. I've saw that twice in my life. It's real. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, our debate or argument is not going to be about any of that today. We're simply going to give you biblical instructions for what Peter told them they must do. Those that were out there and witnessed this that were not participants in it came up and asked Peter men and brethren what must we do in other words what's required and if you'll go to Acts chapter 2 don't take my word for it in verse 38 and 39 here's what Peter's response to what is required in other words what must they do be very careful about how the wording is presented this is not advice this is instruction. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. That's requirement. Understand, these are instructions for what you must do. First, 
repent and to be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Second thing, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Take that name upon you in baptism. Now, baptism by instruction was advanced twice from what it was with John. John introduced the essentiality of baptism when he baptized the Lord Jesus Christ himself unto repentance. Now that was the flesh going under the water that represented mankind. Jesus said, I must do it. He instructed John to baptize him. But that was, bapti uh, that was baptism unto repentance. And it was appropriate for that time and for that place. And then Jesus told him and Matthew to go forth and preach the gospel and baptize him in Matthew 28, 19. In the name, notice that, in the name, not the names, plural, but the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Now, then that advanced the instruction of baptism from what it was with John, see. But it was still essential. So it was, it was essential they be baptized. But Jesus was still alive in his flesh, walking around as a man here on earth among men. For him to have told the masses then to be baptized in his name, it had not yet been revealed fully who he was. Understand. So baptism was advanced there by Jesus from what it was with John, because the message of the gospel, the purposes of the kingdom of God, had been advanced from what they were with John. John was introducing it. Jesus was coming on the scene to fulfill it. The New Covenant, the New Testament, in his blood. Now here Peter, at, at the foundational beginnings of the church, the New Testament church is taking and advancing according to the anointing of the Holy Ghost, as the Lord had told us would happen back in John, uh, St. John chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16, about the whole purpose unfolding. And uh, God, Jesus told Peter that he would give him the kingdoms, uh, the keys to the kingdom. Well, these are those keys. This is the new birth experience. So let's look. What's he saying thus far? Then Peter said unto them to be baptized, to be repent, one, and be baptized in the, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, when your sins are remitted, it's just like putting them in an envelope, putting a stamp on them, putting them in the mailbox to heaven. They're remitted like you remit a letter and send it. It's not in your hands anymore. It's remitted unto God. It's sent unto God. Okay, so repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he tells them, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, if you do these two things, you shall. In other words, shall is a promise word. It's not just a maybe or a perhaps you will. It is a promise word. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is a promise. It's an experience. And that experience is going to come as it always has since the beginnings here at Acts with the church. It's never been done away with. It is part of the foundation upon which the New Testament church is built in structure. We never do away with it. We build on it and continue upon that same foundation, folks. It's required. It's not an option. It's required. The other videos that are following up don't tell you that. I'm telling you now that by introduction of these videos. <clears throat> now, verse 39. Uh, important to point out. Two things that you do, that you're responsible to do, is to repent Understand what Jesus did, what he accomplished on the cross. Recognize that you're not in control when it comes to your salvation. Turn away from the sinful life and look to God for your help from heaven above. And you're going to get that help as you continue to obey with the next step of baptism. 
Because once you fulfill these two things, and they are established in your life, in your lifestyle, in your commitment, in your heart, in your soul, then the Lord does the third part. The Lord fills you with the power of the Holy Ghost, just like he did here in the book of Acts. Why? Because, in verse 39, for the promise is unto you. And to your children. No, it didn't stop there. It was to your children. And it didn't stop with your children. And to all that are afar off. That includes us today. It's important you understand that. This has not been done away with. The people who's told you that are lying. They are lying. They are not preaching the full instruction of this New Testament Bible. Which takes in, by grace, the Old Testament. It's all part of the same package. Praise the Lord. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Well, thank God that he's reaching out and calling us today. Well, this is Pastor Alan Chance of the Bible Church at Pipe Creek, Texas. And I've put together a playlist of very informative videos for our times. And the first three uh, deal with uh, understandings concerning prophecy and biblical doctrines of these end times. Now, a couple of those take a little bit shorter stopping point about salvation. So I, that's why I introduced with what I taught you today is so that you'll have that information because that is vital. It is more vital than any other information you will receive. So thank you for being patient with me. Uh, I'm going to close with a very short prayer. Praise the Lord. Dear God, reach into the hearts of every person. In the name of Jesus Christ. And help them, O oh Lord God, receive today what is needed for today. Let thy will be done in their life here on earth today, as your will is done in heaven. In Jesus' name, can we all say, Amen. Enjoy and benefit from the following videos that will start automatically. In Jesus' name, farewell for now.